I had been traveling around in Thailand for a few weeks and had ended up in a hotel downtown Bangkok. After some time in this hotel, I'd finally decided to head back to Europe for the summer. But the hotel had been really nice and I had enjoyed my time here. Hello everybody, hello, welcome to another video. I am here in Bangkok in a hotel and today I'm flying. I have a flight to Europe. It's gonna be a 13 hour flight, non-stop. Um, and it's leaving at 1 a.m. So I'll be checking out of this hotel here and then I will be taking my bag and starting my long, long journey. I'm gonna film everything what it looks like at the airport and what it's like to fly around in the world at this time later that evening I'm gonna take my bag and head out and get to the airport Let's go, let's go, let's go Adios amigos, adios After four months of non-stop traveling over 120 days in hotels uh, yeah more than 120 something and now I'm homeless again. <laughs> but I like when I'm homeless because um, it makes up for an adventure. I don't know what's gonna happen or where I'm gonna go. So that's exciting actually. <laughs> I have two cards. <laughs> because you gave me one extra. So I'm gonna just eat something and then head over to the airport. And I'm actually really excited to be heading out of this part of the world. I had enjoyed the tasty food in Thailand and had had some good salads, fried rice chicken and spicy soups with beef and tofu. Now I had to find a taxi over to the airport. I think it's gonna take 45 minutes maybe. We'll see if we can stop somebody here. Hello, I'm going to the airport. How much does it cost? Where you going? Savarnabhumi. Mr. Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, we're going to the airport. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Goodbye. Goodbye. Paid only 260 baht for this long taxi ride. The taxis have been so cheap. And just in general, like the food has also been really cheap. Food, hotels, you get a lot for your money here. And I uh, also got my boarding pass straight to my phone this time. I was able to check in online. I'm flying with Thai Airways and uh, it's really great when you get the boarding pass straight to your phone because now I don't have to check in and they're not gonna look at my bag and see that it's actually too heavy to bring in hand luggage. <laughs> so uh, that's a good thing. If you get your boarding pass straight to your phone, you can always bring hand luggage that is too heavy because then nobody can check it. Only time they can check it is when you go to the counter and check in and get your boarding pass there. One thing I've noticed, all the windows are really tinted here. All the cars have really black tint on their windows in Thailand. Now let's go in to the airport. I checked the monitor here and um, I need to go to H. Row H is what it said. This is E. E. And also when you get your boarding pass straight to your phone, you avoid this. The line is huge here. Look at this line. Wow, wow, wee, wow. This is all for Thai Airways that I'm going with. This whole line. The months of June, July and August is usually when the most people fly around in the world and also usually the most expensive flight tickets. And after the pandemic it seemed like people really wanted to start traveling again. Look at this here. It's all full over there and the line continues all the way back here just to get your boarding pass. <laughs> so it seems like they have started with something new. This was the first time this happened to me. I um, showed them my boarding pass that I have on my phone. And they said uh, that's not accepted, you gotta get the physical boarding pass, like the paper boarding pass, otherwise you can't get through here. Perfect, thank you. Oh, thank you! Actually, I was able to get the boarding pass from one of the machines, otherwise I would have had to stay in that line. 
that would take two hours for sure it's huge it's like a long snake slithering snake with people wow i'm so happy that i could get the boarding pass from the machine it took like two minutes and that's only because i don't have a bag to check if i had a bag that i needed to check then i would have had no choice but stand in that line when you leave thailand you have to go through an immigration checkpoint and there they will check to see if you overstayed your visa in some countries you can have some serious trouble if you have overstayed your visa i had to fill out some papers on the way out and then go through the security control you're gonna take this if i if i can't show you that it's four thousand yeah this is i look already it's not happened four thousand yes it's four thousand it's me. it's six times smaller than the maximum limit it's Say not okay don't check the picture for so many, they have so to show the picture. So what you do picture. with it, you, you throw it away, you take it and throw it. Yeah. Nobody can bring power bank. Yeah. <laughs> this is all, yeah. this is less than, uh, yeah. this is maybe 3,000, uh -huh. this is 8,000, yeah. this is 5,000, yeah. but you still take all of them. Okay. You, you're gonna take it? I can put in the you're gonna security box. Okay. Well, I came through the immigration and uh, I had a little bit of trouble there. They ended up taking my power bank. <laughs> They just took it and the guy also showed me a huge uh, container with other batteries that they had taken. And uh, here in this airport it seems like they have a regulation that says you cannot bring a power bank that has more than 32,000 milliamp hours. But my battery was only 4,000 milliamp hours so it was almost 10 times smaller than the maximum allowance. Um, but they said if you cannot show on the battery how many milliamp hours it has if there's no text saying how big their battery is then they're gonna take it no matter how small or big it is but i told him this is it's obvious that this is like way way smaller than a battery that would have 32,000 milliamp hours like just look at the size you can see that it's about 4,000 or 6,000 like uh, usually you can see on the batteries without even knowing how many milliamp hours they have and I was trying to tell the guy that he said no 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 so they take all batteries um, that don't have a text on them <laughs> saying how big they are and that is something actually that I've seen lately in this year 2022 I've been to uh, several countries in this uh, year and um, always there was something about lithium batteries also in the Maldives and India specifically you have to take your batteries in the hand luggage you cannot check lithium batteries anymore um, so you have to take them in your hand luggage for some reason I don't know why but then if you do take them in the hand luggage then there are also regulations which is kind of crazy I'm gonna wait for two hours before my flight is leaving without my power bank I need my power bank that they took <laughs> so in different countries they have taken different things from me at the airports in Mexico they took my tripod in Kabul Cabo San Lucas and uh, in India they wanted to take my flex band and my drone and here they, they took my uh, <laughs> power bank <laughs> if there's one advice that I can give to people that I have learned from traveling now for more than five years and being all around the world the best advice I can give is don't bring too much stuff and if you can only bring hand luggage that's the best advice I can give <laughs> I'm going to D4 and D1 to D4 is over here but D6 to D8 is over there D now here is D1 and D8 but D D4 is over here most airports are quite easy to find your way around but uh, not this one or maybe I'm just tired I don't know I don't feel that tired <laughs> but I keep going the wrong way oh McDonald's I'd almost made it to the gate but I happened to drop my camera and it fell about 20 or 30 feet to the floor below and I couldn't get a hold of it again I dropped my camera <laughs> like probably 30 feet my GoPro let's see if it's gonna if it's broken or not it's down there look uh, he, I think he's coming to get it yeah thank you oh I just want my camera but uh, they're just closing the whole thing down there <laughs> I don't know how I'm gonna get it or I'm gonna get down there hello I dropped it 
I go down here. Okay. Now the police took my camera. Ten minutes later. I got the camera without any trouble. I'd been filming so much in here. Whew, I thought the police was gonna take it. I ran around here and uh, they were walking away. I saw them walking away with the camera. And I ran after them, but they were on the floor down here. And there was no way to get down there. And I can't believe that the camera still works. I dropped it from like, it must have been six meters, like 20 feet something. I had these scenari scenarios playing out in my head, how they were gonna go through the footage and find something they didn't like. And then I was gonna miss the flight and... Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> so you might be wondering, like, how can you drop a camera down the escalator? I don't know how, I just kind of tripped on this one of the steps and then fumbled with the camera and then it fell over somehow. I had made it to the gate and it was so packed with people there about to get on the plane and go to Sweden. Thirty-nine. Thirty-nine J. Thank you so much. Other side. This side or that side? J. This side. Here we go. Oh, so packed with people here. Look. I was about to go almost halfway around the globe, from Bangkok to Stockholm in Sweden. for like, uh, I don't know, an hour and a half only, or like two hours maybe. <laughs> but it's a direct flight, so no layover. That's really nice when you don't need to have a layover, actually. What is this? We were coming in over India and about to pass by Pakistan, Afghanistan, Iran, and then into the southeast part of Europe. I was so tired and sat down to try and sleep for a bit. Eight hours later. I've been on the flight for maybe like 10 hours, I think. And we have two hours left. I slept probably seven hours actually. Quite good. And look, they have a perfume in here. I thought you were not allowed to bring liquids on their plane. We came in over Turkey and had to take a detour around Ukraine since we couldn't pass by directly above the country. Instead we went above Poland and approached from the southern part of Sweden. Now the white and purple Thai Airways airplane was coming in over Stockholm and the 13 hour direct flight was coming to an end. I have arrived back in Sweden here after a 12 hour direct flight from Bangkok. I can feel it already that it's quite cold outside. Uh, when I walked out of the plane, it must have been like 15 Celsius or so, 60, 65 Fahrenheit. It's actually really easy to go to Sweden, there's never any trouble here, never any forms you need to fill out. Anybody that goes to Sweden does not need a visa in advance. You automatically get three months when you go through the passport control. I came through the uh, passport control, they looked at my passport for maybe uh, 10 seconds. And uh, here are all the people waiting for their bags, but I have my hand luggage here. So I'm just gonna be uh, finding the bus. I have all the people waiting for the bags. Hey, I checked that. But don't forget bussarna går härifrån. Terminal 4. Terminal 4. Aha, they have up here, right? Yeah, we're going the whole. Okay, and then from the other side. The airport in Sweden have been totally packed, and it has been on the news a lot lately. 
Also, the biggest flight company, Scandinavian Airlines, was perhaps about to go bankrupt because of the many pilots going on strike. I forgot how tall people are here in Sweden. Like, every time I come back, I feel kind of short, and I'm uh, six feet, like 180 centimeters. Kind of crazy, even uh, women are like six feet, a lot of people here. <laughs> I don't know why people are so tall in the north part of Europe and Scandinavia in particular. The tallest people in the world are here in this part of the world. And so short in like Indonesia, Southeast Asia. So I think the bus is leaving here in three minutes is what it says. Let's see if we can buy a ticket here. Can we scan this here? Yes. I was on the bus going to the central part of Stockholm where I would get on a train and continue my journey for just a little bit longer. But this is so funny here at the ATM in Sweden. You can get Thai but look! Because so many people go to Thailand and also that's why they had a direct flight from Bangkok to Stockholm. So this is the Stockholm central station here again for trains and buses. You've probably seen it already if you've seen my other videos. I was here four months ago in the winter time actually. It's a huge terminal and uh, you have trains going all over Sweden from here. And a huge screen here with all the departures. Look at this screen. <laughs> and quite cool actually. And also an opening here in the middle. Uh, with a big hole and that's where um, you have to go to get to the tracks, train tracks right here. And here is the screen with all the departures. I got my ticket here from these green machines, 172 crowns, 17 dollars or so for this one hour train ride west. The train I was supposed to go on is, has been cancelled. <laughs> It just says on the screen here, cancelled, something is wrong with the train. <laughs> no information, so you don't know what's gonna happen. When I was in Japan a few years ago, I took the train all around Japan. I must have been on like 30 or 40 trains. It none of the trains were even late by a minute. Always on time and they were also going like 360 kilometers per hour. <laughs> <laughs> like super fast bullet trains, Shinkansen. Here we have uh, Presbyron, it's the most uh, common convenience store here in Sweden. It's like OXO in Mexico or 7 Eleven in Thailand. Let's see what they have here. I'm gonna buy some coffee maybe. Yeah, ska vi ta en bulle för tio? Um, nej, jag äter inte bulle. Har du något annat att erbjuda? Ja, jag kan ta frukt. <laughs> 32 crowns, 3 dollars and 20 cents for a coffee and a banana. Not too bad, I guess, or maybe, yeah. The train is leaving in 50 minutes and I wanted to go out here and fly my drone. I went out in Stockholm real quick. And it's by far the biggest city in Sweden. 1 million people. The total population is just around 10 million people. In the central part of the city, you also have the parliament and the royal castle. train has arrived. <coughs> Let's see, I might go up to the top floor, but I have to use the toilet first actually. Toilet, oh, where's the toilet? Oh. Need the toilet. Maybe next one. 
I was back in the east part of Sweden again, by the Baltic Sea and the capital of Stockholm, now going to my hometown of Eskilstuna, about an hour west by train. I would visit my family and then perhaps do some traveling in Europe after. I have arrived in Eskilstuna. Tjena. Kan man åka med? Ja. Vid golfbanan. Golfbanan, ja. ja. I had come to see my mother again after having lived and traveled abroad since 2009. And in the next video I will show you the biggest holiday in Sweden, Midsummer, that happened on the 25th of June. So I'm a bit behind on my videos. But if you want to see that, please subscribe to the channel. And if you like this video, please leave it a thumbs up.